yesterday and this week been in Lutheran and all sorts of other churches and it's been a huge privilege. But I'm with my tribe today. I'm from this tribe and so it's such an honour to be here and you know I've just really sensed prayer as I've been going around to the churches and I just wonder today, I believe God wants to speak to you. He doesn't have a one size fits all. The Holy Spirit comes and tailor makes things to us specifically. And so I wonder if you would just, if you're comfortable, just open your hands today. You might say, I can't do this. Well, just open your hands. It's better than doing this and saying, God, try not to get me. <laughs> open your hands. We're going to pray the most ancient prayer of the church. Come, Holy Spirit. Let's pray it together, shall we? Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you are here. We thank you for your incredible comfort and counsel and guidance. And Holy Spirit, I ask today that you would take this word, that you would make it specific and relevant to every person here. Holy Spirit, we open our hearts for an impartation for you. We have ears today that would listen to what you would say to your church. And we say today, help her, Lord, not to get in the way. Lord, we pray that we will come to know you in a greater way that we will take a step forward in what you want us to do and that we will be fully equipped for the amazing vision and plan you have for each of us. We just ask it now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Tell someone next to you, God wants to talk to you today. She's all the way here just for you. Well, you don't you love how God leads you in unexpected ways? You know, this is my first time here, so if this is your first time, hey, we're in this together, okay? It's going to be all right. If you're feeling a little uncomfortable, so am I, so we're all at home then. And plus, they promised if we sit here and listen, we're going to get coffee and biscuits. <laughs> How cool is that? It's just a great honour to be here, Pastor Joel. I follow him on Instagram and social media, so I know everything. I just stalk him, see what's happening in the church. So when I came today, someone said, you know we're having water baptisms? Oh, of course. You know, I felt like I knew that, you know, yesterday. <laughs> you know, and um, I've been going around to all of the ACC state conferences and everybody's talking about what's happening in WA under Pastor Joel's leadership. And, you know, it's fantastic to hear about that. You are such a generous church. To be able to share your pastor with, with the state, to be able to have a vision beyond what you're doing, it's just incredible. You know, whatever he does, you do because you're a team. So I don't know if you do this, but, you know, how is it in? So would you just pat someone's back next to you and say, well done. Thanks for being so generous. Thanks for serving the state. Thanks for caring. And some people, hey, you know, if you're not sitting next to one, you're going to get longer arms. And don't, some of you patted someone's back way too hard. I walked in. I had a great message prepared this morning, and it was obviously for me. Because when I walked in this morning, I just felt the Holy Spirit say, this is a bold church. I want you to speak on being a bold follower of Jesus. So, okay, that's great. And I, I, I thought, I don't, I don't even know if I have that message here. And yes, I preached this message exactly five years ago in a Baptist church. Isn't that interesting? So I want to speak today on being bold. And I looked up the um, what bold means, and it says this. Firstly, not hesitating or fearful in the face of actual or possible danger or rebuff. Courageous and daring. A bold hero. Wow, wouldn't it be amazing to be a bold hero, a bold superhero, like a Moses when he stood before Pharaoh, a David when he stood before Goliath, Jesus when he faced the cross. But not all of us feel like we can be that kind of bold hero. Another definition of boldness is this, not hesitating to break the rules of proprietary. Forward, impudent. Mm. He apologised for being as bold as to speak to the emperor. Mm. Some of you fit that bill. Bold like Esther, bold like Nehemiah, bold like Joseph or Paul or Peter, people who challenge the convention, 
people who challenge the rules of what was acceptable behaviour. You know, in our context, it might be people who challenge the liturgy or people who challenge the way church should be. Thirdly, another definition of bold is this, necessitating courage and daring, a bold adventure. You know, faith is a bold adventure. The whole concept of coming to faith is such a bold adventure. We work with Alpha. You know, there's 27 million people around the world who've done Alpha. The goal is 100 million people. In Australia, our goal by 2023 is to have one million Australian Alpha stories. One million people in our nation. And basically the concept behind Alpha is this. How do we invite Australians to have spiritual conversations? 49% of Australians never get to have a spiritual conversation. They're not sitting around at the pub talking about whether or not they like the soul motions. They're not sitting down the pub talking about where they stand these days on, on creation. They're not sitting at the pub or down at the sporting club going, you know, if I could, if you could just explain to me the Trinity, things would be good. They're not even sitting um, outside the, the school ground waiting for pickup saying, so has anyone had any great answers to prayer in their life lately? They're not having an opportunity to discuss the great questions of life. So all we're seeking to do is invite people on a journey to discuss their questions, to talk about the things that are on their heart, to think about those things. To be bold is to sometimes shut up. To listen to people's questions, to let them go on a journey. Bold, fourthly, beyond the usual limits of conventional thought or action. Imagination. Just like saying Einstein was a bold mathematician. You, know, you think about Mary and the angel. God seems to love doing things that have never happened before. Hey, you're going to have a child who's going to be the saviour of the world. The Holy Spirit is going to overshadow you. That's outside the norm. That's beyond our comprehension. Sometimes to be bold is to have an imagination that is God-breathed and that we then go, okay, what is it that God wants to do because only he can make it happen. Sometimes bold, fifthly, is striking or conspicuous to the eye, flashy or showy. And you go, oh, no, I'm a Christian. I don't be flashy or showy. But you think about Elijah calling down fire from heaven in front of the prophets of Baal. Fairly flashy. <laughs> Quite public. <laughs> One of those things that Jesus going into a religious um, temple and overturning the tables of the money changers because they're ripping people off. You see, boldness has many different forms and looks at many different ways. I need to tell you right up front that I'm not a risk taker. You know, I've never jumped out of a plane. I was driving here and I saw this monster waterfall. And I thought, ah, oh, that won't be me. I don't like doing those things. You know, how many people are like me? You're not natural risk takers. Yeah, I hear you. I'm with you. But there are other people and they love that stuff. The adrenaline junkies, they're like, bring on a challenge. You know, I want to jump out of a plane. I want to abseil down a building. I want to, I don't know. I, I can't even begin to think about what they want because it scares me. How many risk takers do we have here? Fantastic. Well done. See, you put your hands up quicker. <laughs> you straight away like, yep, that's me. Us people, non-risk takers, we're like, I'm going to do this just in case she makes me do something. <laughs> I'm not, bold Christianity is not about risk taking. It's not being a bold person. You know, I'm not a risk taker, I'm not particularly a bold person, but I've travelled to many war zones. I've been shot at, I had people try to kill me, I've planted churches, I've met with underground church leaders. Stepped out to raise millions of dollars in faith. Stepped out to set audacious goals in giving personally. I've prophesied over politicians, been involved in casting out of demons. That was an interesting one. It was fascinating. It was, was these Catholics said to me, oh, you know, we're going to have a Holy Spirit weekend. And I love praying for Catholics for the Holy Spirit. It's just the most fun. It started off with me being in a cathedral and I was praying, come Holy Spirit. And this guy just, just fell to the ground. And everybody was like, quick, let's get an ambulance. And it was a priest. And I go, priest that fell to the ground. I said, oh, no, sometimes God wants to do things in people's lives. And they looked at me and I looked at them and I said, so let's just pray. So we just kept saying, come Holy Spirit. And I'm there going, oh, God, please let that be you. Please let that be you. <laughs> you know, because what if he really had had a heart attack? So then, <laughs> anyway, so 
Then they said to me, are we going to, you know, do, we're going to do Alpha and all of these. And basically the concept behind Alpha, I'm just telling you stories, I'm not trying to sell Alpha because it's all free. So what happened was we, the first 30, have all these questions, 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 and no answers. People don't want answers, they want to express their questions. So we do that, and then the, the second third is the Holy Spirit time. Love the Holy Spirit time. Because people get to experience the power of God for themselves in a very natural way. Would you like me to pray for you? Oh, yes, that would be fine. I'll just put my hand on your shoulder. Oh, yes, and pray, come Holy Spirit. And then you watch what happens. So the Catholics were saying, we're going to do all this together. And they said, now the only thing is if we have a Holy Spirit weekend like this, we have to have a qualified exorcist. Okay, so they said to me, are you qualified? And I thought, oh, yes. <laughs> Jesus said in my name, we'll cast out demons. Like, how hard could it be, right? And they said, um, are you qualified in the Catholic context? <laughs> well, Jesus qualified me like he had something to do with the founding of the church. So done lots of things that were, that were difficult, that were challenging, not because I'm naturally bold, not because of who I am, but because of who I belong to. You see, God wants to take us the next step in our journey of following him. The minute that we feel comfortable and able to do something is the moment we should actually be quite afraid because we're going to hear the prompting of God to take a step beyond, to take a step beyond where we are now. I'm the oldest in my family. How many oldest people do we have? You know that you had to break your parents in, right? You know, we had to lead the way, we had to do things. And so I had a younger brother, I've got the youngest people here. Yeah, yeah, yeah youngest child in the family. And you know, your old parent, older siblings, they got into trouble all the time, right? You know, they picked on you, they did this, you whinging babies. So, <laughs> and then there's the people in the middle. Aha, uh -huh. we know who you are. You just try and fly under the radar, don't you? You just try and, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was the oldest and I had a younger brother who, um, you know, until, until he grew a bit, would do what I said. I take responsibility for the fact he got into kickboxing and security. Um, and so, so I once said to him, we're going we're gonna to jump off the back patio. And you know, the back patio didn't look that big from down the bottom. But once you, it was probably about as high as this. And, um, but once you got up the top, it looked a lot higher. And so we climbed out the outside of the railing and we held on. And I said to him, we're going to jump off. You want to jump off? Oh, don't be baby, it'll be fine. So I said, on the count of three, we're just going to take a step forward. So we practiced. We took one foot out. You know the thing about one foot is you're still holding on. We took one foot and then we put it back. One foot and put it back. And then I said to him, the count of three, we're just going to let go and we're going to jump together. And then what we did was this, one, two, and I smacked his head and we jumped. <laughs> You've got to help your brothers out. <laughs> Sometimes the first step is a lot easier than the second step. I want to look about a, a passage of scripture today, and some of you can breathe a sigh of relief now because I'm going to check out the Bible. Matthew chapter 14. I still believe it. It's the only guide for life. Matthew chapter 14, verse 22. And there's a story, and I'm going to tell you the story if you don't mind, but you can check it out in the Bible, make sure I'm telling the truth. In Matthew chapter 14, Jesus says to his disciples, hey, we go, I want you to get in the boat and go to the other side and I'll meet you there. And so the disciples get in the boat. Jesus is tired, the disciples are tired, but this is their scene. They've travelled here all the time. They get in the boat and um, it starts to become night. You know, it's really interesting in our lives that in night seasons, things get a bit scarier. Have you found that? Really bold during the day, but about three in the night, three in the morning, you kind of, oh, what about this? What about this? Or when you're feeling like it's a, a maintenance season, fear comes to you easier. And they're sitting in the boat and they're afraid. There's a wind and a storm and they're thinking, we're going to sink. You know, I've been in the sea and I thought, well, there are a bunch of winds. This doesn't look bad. And then one time we were there and this mist blew up and we were in the boat and we couldn't see which way land was. In the middle of the day, it just blew up from nowhere. And the guy in the boat says, oh, it's okay, we've got GPS. But they didn't have GPS. <clears throat> so they're in the boat, the mist has come up, they can't see anything. Have you ever been in a storm in a boat when it's dark? Literally or figuratively? And so they're there and they're all afraid. And here's one thing I've watched in life, that often when you're afraid and things are bad, the next step is not good, it's often worse. <laughs> so they're in the boat and things are bad, and you know what happens then? They see a ghost. 
see a ghost walking towards them. And now they're terrified. And then someone in the boat, thank God for someone. There's always someone who says, I think that looks like Jesus. And Peter goes, is that Jesus? Is that not Jesus? Often in the night when it's dark, it's hard to recognise what is God and what isn't. And so they look out and they see Jesus. And Peter goes, Jesus, if that's really you, you know, so often when God is wanting us to step out, we're like, I think that's God, but if it's really you, could you just confirm it to me? Have you ever had that experience? So Peter goes, if it's really you, bid me come to you. I love how God answers our prayers. And then we think, why is this happening to me? Because Jesus says to Peter, come. And now Peter's like, come? <laughs> why would I want to come? I remember being in India the first time ever and, and uh, you know, that I was standing in front of this open sewer preaching. It was a really strange system. We'd walk through the village and sing. And generally, like, if you want to clear the building, I'll sing. <laughs> so, but apparently there it gathered a crowd to laugh or whatever. I don't know. And we're standing in front of this open sewer and they said to me, now, don't step back. I'm like, I'm not stepping back. And um, anyway, we're there and, and God really prompted me to, to pray for someone I didn't want to do and there was a major change that happened in my heart and compassion. And, and, um, and it was an amazing experience. But the thing about it for me was this. I was standing there saying, God, why am I here? What am I doing here? I don't belong here. I don't speak the language. I don't understand the culture. Beef curry, are you kidding me? <laughs> you know, <laughs> what is all this? And um, I felt the Holy Spirit say, you ask for this. I'm like, no, I never ask for this. There was nothing I asked for that said put me in front of an open sewer with people in front of me with pus all over them and, and I can be preached. I never asked for that. I never asked for these sights and sounds and smells. I specifically didn't ask for that. You know, I studied law. I didn't ask for that. <clears throat> and then the Holy Spirit, just, you know, the Holy Spirit is so gentle and wonderful. And he just showed me a picture of me singing these really stupid songs. All to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back. You know, these prayers that we pray. These things that we said, oh God, I just I just pray for the nations. What I meant was, God, I pray that you send people to the nations. Preferably others. We pray these prayers and then we get surprised. Oh, God, just use me. And then we complain that we're used. <laughs> Haven't you ever? Oh, God, I feel so used. Well, that's what you asked for. <laughs> but when I said use me, I meant help me float around seeing miracles happen. I didn't mean working hard. <laughs> Feeling rejection. So he prays his prayer. Jesus said to him, come. And at the invitation of Jesus, Peter is faced with the decision to obey. Am I going to step out of where I am into what he's inviting me into? Am I going to step from the relative safety? See, before the boat was actually terrifying. You know it's the safe zone? Really interesting how God can change our perspective in a second. So he starts to get out of the boat. He's a fisherman. This is his boat. He's done this so many times before. But it's interesting how God's calling, that which we've done before and is natural, suddenly becomes supernatural. Suddenly has a dimension to it that is beyond our comprehension, that is beyond our capacity, that is beyond our ability. And he, he starts to take a step out of the boat. First step is a step of faith. Wow. I'm starting to take a step towards God, what God wants me to do. But you know at the first step, you can still hang on. At the first step, there's still a way back. At the first step, you're still, they call it a bad edge way. You're moving up, up, up. You know, you know that rock? Let's start a new business. Oh, let's not. Oh, let's get baptised. Oh, let's not. Oh, we just really sense God's calling us to set a giving goal. Oh, that might have been God. You have that rock? Oh, goes back to Eve. Has God said? Has God said? The enemy only has one tactic. Has God said? And we go, oh, yes, oh, no, oh, maybe. 
and we do the faith step rock. We're taking a step towards it, but we're still holding on to that which is comfortable. We're taking a step towards it, but we're holding on to the ability to go back. You know what the step of obedience is? Step two. It takes a step of faith, and then it takes that step of obedience. Obedience is letting go of what's behind and moving forward to that which is unknown. That's boldness. It's that step of obedience, that step towards what God is calling you to before you know that you're able to do it. It's the step of faith and obedience towards a different future where there's no guarantee of success. It's a step of faith and obedience that says, God, I don't know how this will turn out. I'm not able to do this. This is beyond me. And you finally get, oh, so it's over to you. I'm depending on you. And he starts to take steps towards Jesus. He's not taking steps of presumption. He hasn't jumped out of the boat because he thought it was a good idea and wants to show off to his friends. He's stepping out of the boat because he's walking towards God's plan for his life. He's obeying the voice of the Lord. He's obeying the voice that says to him, come. And he starts to walk towards Jesus and suddenly he's doing things that he never imagined he could do. He's doing things that, it's not that they're illogical, but they're beyond his logic. I had a friend recently who did his PhD in physics. You know, I, I knew where the science faculties were at uni, but I wasn't going to go there. And he did this PhD in physics, and we went out to lunch to celebrate, and he had this really nice little booklet, you know, big thing. And, um, and he said, oh, you know, his congratulations, and really exciting about your PhD. And he goes, oh, yes. And he shows me his booklet thing, thesis. And, uh, and we go, oh, that's great. My husband, I love education, so fantastic. And he goes, would you like to read it? <laughs> um, so I thought I'd just flip through, get the gist of it. <laughs> you know, like chapter headings. Yeah, well, I couldn't understand those. So I went, oh, wow, this looks lovely. Well, you spot your name right. <laughs> That's really good. And it's all about little particle things that, that run around other things. Um, and there's all these little formulas, and they all looked really neat. It wasn't that that thesis was illogical. It was beyond my understanding. It was beyond my education. And sometimes when God calls us forward, we're like, but I don't understand it. That's the whole point, people. But this is beyond what I can do. Yep. Because it says things like this, God's ways are higher than our ways. Oh, oh, but I like my ways. I feel comfortable. I feel safe. I feel capable. I've got the KPIs, I've got the experience. And then God says, no, boldness is stepping beyond your comfort zone. Boldness is stepping beyond what you can do into what he asks you to do. Boldness is a step where there isn't a way back, there's only forward and keeping our eyes on him. And then what happens, he's keeping his eyes on him and he suddenly realises, how am I walking on water? And he looks around, there's wind, there's storms. Oh no, this is dreadful. Have you ever been in that place? How am I doing this? This is, this is beyond me. I had a step of faith. We, with, with Alpha, there's about 13 million people in Australia that say they're Christian. 13 million. Isn't that amazing on the census? About 5 million say they're Catholic, 2 million say they're Anglican, and 13 million Christians altogether. All we have to, and there's about 2 million that go to church on Sunday. 1 million to Mass, 1 million to all of the churches combined. All we have to do is invite those other 11 million to know what Christianity is. It's not that hard, is it? They're already warm. So I was looking at all these Catholics and I thought, you know, if we really want to see people come to faith, be filled with the Holy Spirit, read their Bible, start praying for healing, which is all of what Alpha um, talks about, then we need to reach the Catholic Church. So I thought, okay, how, how do I do that? So they have all these systems. So we started ringing up people. And just we, firstly, we started to pray. Well, we just asked for an open door. And, you know, you pray and pray, and then we started knocking on doors. You know, asked a cardinal, there's only one, there was one. Then some archbishops, then some bishops, just trying to find someone who would meet with me. It doesn't sound that hard, but we found it quite impossible. So everyone went, ah, uh, no, ah, uh, no. The no's don't mean you're on the wrong track. Okay? When you see the wind and the waves, it doesn't mean you've done something wrong. The step between stepping out in obedience and seeing God's plan unfold is dark because it's a step of faith, the step of holding your nerves, the step of saying, 
God has said, God has said, God has said, God has said. So we kept on knocking on the doors and eventually we found someone who ran a website on evangelization for the Catholic Church. So they said they would see me win. So they were in Sydney, so I went to Sydney and met with this lady. We were in a cafe looking for someone that looks like they might work on a Catholic evangelism website. And there they're looking for someone who might be from Alpha. It was really funny. So we met each other and we sat down and we are having a cup of coffee. It was all very polite and all very formal. And, you know, it was obvious to her that I was a Catholic. Um, and so we, we had some conversations. <laughs> At the end of it, can I just say, whenever I meet with people, if I possibly can, I say this. Can I pray for you? How can I pray for you? I used to say, can I pray for you? Forget that. That doesn't work. How can I pray for you? Don't give them a choice, yes or no. Oh, how can I pray for you? Gets them on the solution side, okay? So she said, how can, I, how can I pray for you? She said, well, actually, there's two things. Oh, that's okay. I can pray for two things today. Because she said, is that okay? Oh, yeah, and I can do two things. So she shared the two things with me. And then I started to pray. Now, what often happens when you're praying for people is they expect you're going to go away in your closet. I don't think so. By the time I get to my closet, I've forgotten. I went, I just pray there. Every miracle that Jesus did was in the marketplace, yeah, right? Good. So the best place to pray for people, so here's my tips on praying. Firstly, keep your eyes open. Yeah. Because if they run away or start to hit you, at least you can see. <laughs> <laughs> and I always touch them because the power of touch. But this is appropriate touch, people. Don't put your hand on the head and spit. <laughs> yeah? Or here. Appropriate touch. So she had her arm on that. So I just, I just thought I'd put my hand here. And I said, God, I just ask this and this, the two things. And then I just felt to pray for something else. And I asked for this. Now, it was a short prayer, because I'm waiting for my coffee. And I'm pretty desperate about coffee. And I was waiting for the person to come with my ladder, and I was going to make sure they brought it to my table not somewhere else's. You think I'm really carnal? Look, here's the thing. So often when I pray, I don't sense anything. Why should I? God's not working through in me. He's working through me to them. Wow. Why should I feel anything? Wow. It's not who prays for you. It's who they pray to. Wow. So I put my hand, I prayed something else, and then I just said, I usually, normally say something like, in Jesus' name, amen, because most people get that's kind of a finishing thing. So then they sort of feel, oh, good, this is over. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, there's my coffee. And she was crying. And she said to me, why did you pray that? I said, oh, look, I think God just prompts you sometimes to pray things. And it was to pray about her having a child. I didn't even know she had any children. It was just, it was, it was quite a specific prayer. And so that was very interesting. Um, and she said, look, I'm running a conference soon. Would you like to come? Oh, sure, happy to. You know, maybe you could give a talk or something. Yeah, no problems. So we went away. I didn't think anything of it. I'd stepped out in obedience. But now it was like, God, this whole Catholic thing, this isn't happening. You know, it's just discouraging. Didn't I hear from you, da 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 And then we got this beautiful letter. I love some of our traditional churches. They send letters. It just makes you feel so important. They have logos and they write on it and they sign things. And it's just gorgeous. And so I opened this letter feeling really grown up. Because we don't get letters very often. And it was her asking me if I would come to speak at the Australian Catholic Bishops' Conference. Yeah. Easy to say awesome, hard to do. Because <laughs> you know what happens when God calls you out into something? He doesn't tell you everything about it. You know why? Because you'd be even more scared. He doesn't tell you what's going to happen. So he called me out. What happened was I spoke at that conference to the Australian Catholic Bishops. It opened amazing doors. When Peter calls out help, Bad can come up, whatever you want. When Peter calls out help, Jesus doesn't say, you lacking in faith person. Jesus doesn't say, oh, that's dreadful. You know what happens? Jesus comes straight to him, pulls him by the hand and says, let's walk back to the boat together. Let's walk back to the boat together. You might have stepped out in faith and you feel like, wow, this isn't working out. God is present, but he's very present in times of trouble. Here's Jesus doesn't ever come to condemn. If you're feeling condemnation, it's coming, not coming from Jesus. John 3, 17. He didn't come to condemn the world, but to save it. He walks back to the boat with Peter. And Peter goes, wow, I know that you're God. He worships him. You know, boldness is stepping beyond where we feel safe. Boldness is stepping from where we are into his future. Boldness is taking that step of faith 
learn a step of obedience and keep on going in the direction that he's called us to. That he's called us to. Would you stand with me? I want you to close your eyes for a moment just because the people around you are so gorgeous they're distracting. I want you to focus just for a moment. I believe God sent me here today to invite you to take the next step in being bold, to take the next step towards Him, to take the next step towards His plan and purpose for your life. It might be just reaching out a hand and praying for someone on a street cafe. It might be stepping out to pray audacious prayers. I've seen the parking in Perth and I realise car parks are hard to get. But he invites us to pray for nations, not just car parks. Ask for the nations. Ask for the nations as your inheritance. Boldness is sometimes asking someone again to come along to church with you. Taking the next step is sometimes sharing a book, sharing a leaflet, sharing something. It takes 8 to 12 connections for someone to come to faith. Every time we share with them, we're taking them around the clock face of faith. Someone today is going to demonstrate bold Christianity by getting baptised in water. A public declaration of what is already happening on the inside. But saying to other people, I want to live this life of faith. I want to, I'm going to invite you in a moment just to say, where do you stand with God today? Perhaps you know about God, but you don't have a personal relationship with him like some of these people. The way that we have a personal relationship with Jesus is to ask. Just like Peter asked, Jesus, do you want me to come? We asked, Jesus, would you come into my life? Would you show yourself to me? Perhaps you've been coming to church or you know God for a while, but you're not sure where you stand with God today. I'm going to invite you in a moment, just where you are, put your hand up, and I'm going to pray with you today. That Jesus himself will come and hold your hand and start walking life with you, showing you the way to live, showing you his pathway. If you'd like me to pray that with you today, just put your hand up right where you are. Say, I need to take the next step. Thank you. Thank you.